Hi, I'm Flavia Leone, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press today. I'm excited to be joined once again by Flavia Leone. How are you? Hi, I'm great. It's always a pleasure to meet you. I'm so excited to chat again. This is round three, and of course, we'll be diving into season two, part two of Diaries or Diary. But first off, I have to ask, how are your holidays and how has your winter season been so far? Um, everything is going really well. Uh, in the holiday, I went skiing, so <laughs> I really like skiing. Um and then at New Year's, uh, at New Year, I went to um, Venice with uh, my sister and Sofia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I went there like when I was uh, four, so I didn't remember much, but I loved um, Venice. It's like the atmosphere is very romantic. So um, yeah, it was a good way to start the year. <laughs> um, and now, yeah, everything is going really well. Yeah, you love to travel. I noticed that um, throughout, you know, the time we've been talking to you. And I know you went skiing with uh, like Liam and Andrea as well. I saw on your yeah, Instagram. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Liam uh, has um, a house near the place we went skiing. So, of course, we met each other. That's um nice to, to have that. So then you can... And he that means he's so close to like the slopes in the in the winter time. Yeah. And in October, you also traveled with Sophia to Japan. Tell me about that trip. Had you had it planned for a while? Was Japan always a country that you wanted to travel to? Yes, absolutely. It was like my dream. Uh, and it was wonderful, really. Um, I love everything about Japan the the food the the people the the culture the 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 nature uh, the places we um we have been and um like we start from Tokyo then we moved to Kyoto uh, Osaka uh, Hiroshima um Shikoku Island um Nara Miyajima like Miyajima is a paradise is it doesn't feel like hurt it's another planet it's really paradise and also naruto whirlpools are uh, really cool so yeah it was a really beautiful journey um i hope i can live there like i hope uh i am can spend more time in Japan as soon as I can. So yeah, it was really awesome, all of it. How long were you in Japan for? Uh, 17 days, yeah. Okay, so Once. you and you did get around, it seems like, to, yeah. to the different <laughs> yeah, areas. It was, it was hard, but of course, uh, really beautiful. And um, I saw different things that both you posted and Sophia, like there are so many, you went to like the deer, the deer park. Yeah, Nara. Nara and also Miyajima. Um, the deers are like dogs. You can touch them. You can give them food. Uh, and of course, in Japan, like the people are so um educated i don't know how to say that uh it's very important the respect there so um, you can see that everywhere like in the streets in the public uh toilet um when you order in a restaurant they are just always amazing and also the deers were amazing i don't know how to say <laughs> that <laughs> yeah and the cats the cats as well oh there are God. a lot of animals right I am such a cat person, so it was like a dream for me. I went to a cat cafe and um, they love cats there. There's also a island dedicated to cats. I don't know if you knew that. Um, unfortunately, we uh, couldn't um, gather, but um, yeah, also the cats are so Japanese. 
they are so <laughs> next like time it's on your list you're like okay the first thing I'm doing next time of I'm course in Japan is going to this cat island um and the food what were some of your the fav your favorite um food items that you ate in Japan it's like everything it's so good like <laughs> of course sushi but um i never tried ramen and so i tried it there and it's amazing like i would say ramen but of course also the sushi the nigiri with the salmon it's from another planet it's uh amazing and also the um, the fruit it, like the grapes um strawberries they are so good And they um, cover the um, strawberries with the uh, sugar, uh, like water and sugar, like caramel, but it's not, it's more So it's healthy. like almost like candy, a candy fruit. Yeah, yeah, but it's super nice and also cheap. So yeah, I love the food also. <laughs> You're making me want to go to Japan. I haven't You been should. yet, but my my sister and my parents are both going um, in like a few months or Amazing. time. And I'm sure they'll tell me all about it. But yeah, the food I, I heard is supposed to be really good. So I hope you get to go back soon. Now to start talking about the show, to help promote season two of Diari, you got to me get to play some games with esports player Power, who also guest starred in the show. How was it to meet and interact with Giorgio? Uh, I didn't have uh, the chance to shoot together on set, but we met for the content, to shoot the content for YouTube. Um, it's really nice, of course. We had a really good time, but I can't say much because we spend very little time together. So, um, yeah, I can say he's very nice and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, and those it's kind of fun, I guess, to come together because you you film the show and then you kind of like put it in the back of your mind and then you get to come back and like film the content again and Yeah. play these games. It was really uh, pretty near because we um and the, the the shooting um like in July and we shoot the content for YouTube in uh, no we and in June and we shoot the content in July Okay, so so there wasn't it, too much of a break in between. no <laughs> no you no. can't no. <laughs> get a break from from your your cast, but that's a good thing because I know a lot of you are like pretty close and you see each other uh, Yeah, throughout. And um, you can to also get see it from the the hair, because right, also yeah, in the content I have blue hair, so it I can was. see it is gone now. Has has it kind of been growing out a bit? <laughs> yes, a little bit. You're trying. I <laughs> know you're trying. Yeah, but the blue, the blue is uh, invisible now. I think it's. pretty gone I guess we'll see in the future if that blue gets brought back but I have a feeling maybe maybe it won't given Livia's change so starting off with her change you know early on in part two of the season she knows she's made a mistake she knows that Katya and Sara are not her true friends take me through that realization for her like did she feel any guilt and responsibility for for what had happened Yeah, yeah, of course, I think she uh, is feeling in some way guilty, but of course, it's not her fault, her fault. But I think it was really traumatic for Livia um, to see her friends uh, bullying Ariana. And so uh, she finally understands that um, all this time they uh, manipulated her. So... Thanks to Bianca also, she um, managed to um, like put all the points together and reveal the puzzle so she can finally help Aliana and also to help her get out of uh, this really hard situation. And you can see in that moment, you know, when she sees Ariana put the money under the locker, like it's very emotional because Livia, she like kind of didn't want to see it before. Like she would kind of put it in the back of her mind when people would tell her they're not good people, but she didn't want Yeah, to believe it. I 
um, I don't think she um, wouldn't she um, couldn't believe it because she really was manipulated by Katya. And so I um, it was difficult to me for me also on the set because I uh, was afraid that Livia could turn out stupid in some way, but of course she is not stupid. She is being manipulated. So yeah, when she sees um, Ariana put the money under the locket, I do you say that the um, yeah, it's the locker. locker yeah, the locker. Okay, uh, she is uh, like how uh, yeah, she's feeling guilty. She's um, demanding to herself how I can could I be so stupid? I how do you say that? Yeah, in that, that's true. It's um, it's like stupid, or they call it um. In English, it's kind of complicated, it's naive. So um, that's the, I think, the word you're looking for in English. But like you mentioned, there's the, the manipulation factor of it because every time she kind of asks Katya about it, Katya turns it back on Livy and says, why do yeah. you think I'm a bad person? Like, how could you ask me that? So it was really difficult for her. And um, I really like that scene in episode Eight, where Livia visits Marina Piccola at the beginning. I thought that was also an emotional one where she remembers yeah. the good time she had with, with Pietro and with 3D. The flashback. <laughs> yeah, it was um, like really moving to shoot that scene because I went back to the Marina Piccola school, school location. So with all the... Um, uh, science the that the school is now abandoned but um yeah it was a hard scene to show for me and it was What's sad it? to see the school in that state all abandoned you know yeah. there's no life there anymore right now Livia begins to run again before she gets injured what does running symbolize or mean for her I think sports in general for Livia are like her big passion so it's fundamental for her like to just um go out and run because <laughs> uh yeah um it represents both um time for herself to clear her mind to also just not think at all <laughs> i think it's important sometimes and it's the best way you can like um leave something behind and just not think and then you can restart so yeah it's it's very important to represent like freedom for Livia uh, running and sports in general it was really nice to see her run again it's something that like you mentioned it resets her mind it's something yeah. very healthy for her to do uh, unfortunately, she after she kind of speaks out against Katya and Sarah, she's harassed, later injured by them out, outside school. Take me through that scene where she fractures her wrist because it was it was a very physical scene for yeah. for you and for uh, for Emily. Yeah, yeah, that was um there was um, a stunt co coordinator. Uh, that helped me, of course, with all the uh, movements. Um, also, of course, Emily and Martina helped me a lot. They were great. And like I said, the, um, the other time we have talked together about uh, Katya and about um, Emily and Martina, that scene, um, Emily, like every take, she was crying because uh, she was really... Um, feeling that scene uh, so it was difficult also for me then I hugged her every um I hugged her every take we we finished the because uh, cause, like it was really important for her also for me I really cared about that scene so I had a lot of anxiety for shooting that scene but at the end I liked the results so I think we <laughs> made a good job you could definitely feel it through through the screen you know how much pain that that Livia was in and for you was it hard to find those um emotions like for like to act out like she that she actually like broke her wrist 
Yeah, because um, as I said before, I was really uh, anxious about the scene. I wanted to uh, make it uh, perfect because it's important for Livia, that scene. Um, so, yeah, with the director and the star coordinator, they give me advice and all together we figure it out how can could be more truthful and um, enjoyable to watch. <laughs> It's great that you had the support, though, because I think always talking th through it with others and about where your character is at can really help you um, portray those emotions. And uh, I loved when 3D marched into the principal's office because they were united, like when occupying the school in season one. Was this an important moment for 3D and their friendship? Yeah, of course, it was a uh, really important for a uh, moment for 3D, um, especially because uh, in that scene they all found out found find out about Ariana, and about uh, my incident, so they all found out in that scene, and um, so it's very important because uh, finding out uh, those secrets, they all can. Uh, uh, reunite each other um they they can um i don't know they can um like understand yeah they understand but they uh also bond the uh, oh my god i don't know bond how to is say a, it. bond is a good word because okay they, yeah. they bond with each with each other <laughs> okay so um they can help livia and adriana all together so yeah, Livia finally um, becomes uh, again like the occupation scene uh, in the first season. She becomes like um, the leader of the situation. She is brave. She convinces Ariana to tell the truth um, to the principal. Um, so yeah, she is feeling um, also powerful. I think she could find the courage to to tell all the all those things um so yeah it's kind kind of reminds of the occupation scene in the first season and i loved it like you mentioned it it felt very powerful because livia she found her voice and also found her voice like to help others to help Ariana and to bring the group together which um, they really needed because it was kind of suffering um, after part one take me through Pietro and Livia's connection and why they understand each other so well like how does Livia feel when she is with Pietro and when he came to check on her after her accident yeah I think um, they are so close to each other because Pietro understands Livia more than anyone else and so does Livia uh, for for Pietro so they understand each other they are in some ways made for each other like um, Isabel says uh, in the last episodes so um, yeah yes they are um, different but uh, at the same time they they feel each other, they understand so well, um, even more than their parents sometimes. So I think is that the main reason because the, the reason why they are so close to each other and also the reason why they can't stay away from each other with the relationship that they have like we don't see it as much in season two but we have to remember in season one they spent a lot of time together they kind of built that relationship and had those conversations with each other um, when Isabel tells Livia that her and Pietro are a couple Livia says she's happy for them but she at first hides her sadness and later on she tells Isabel that she'll try to forget about her feelings but she shares multiple moments with Pietro at school and at Panta Rosa uh, so why was it so hard for her to stay away like did she even try to stay away for Isabel yeah that scene for Livia it's uh I would say intense, but um, she's 
like um surprised because I think she didn't understand that uh Lee and um, Pietro and Isabel were together or anything like that because they are, were best friends also in the first season so she's very hurt when Isabel tells her that but I think um the reason why uh, is um, Livia and Pietro can stay away from each other is like I said before, because they are in love with each other, and um, but also they are very um, close because all the um, because they really understand each other as as I said before, but absolutely is not meant to hurt Isabel. Uh, they don't absolutely want to uh, hurt Isabel in any way um, but they just can't also Pietro it's it's not just Livia also Pietro uh, wants to spend more time with Livia because Livia understands him and uh, like the scene uh, um, on the um, uh, where when Pietro tells Livia that he has been through so many things the um, with Giulio and the parents and all of it and he goes um, all out with Livia and uh, Livia would understand him and he uh, um, sang, sang to him uh, Pastello Bianco it's a really moving scene um, but yeah they are not um, they, they don't want to hurt Isabel like Absolutely not. I think that that's probably one of the reasons why, like, Livia, they don't want to admit that they still like each other, um, when, especially when um, Isabella and Pietro are still together. But like she mentions later on, like, her feelings were kind of, they were too too strong to yeah, kind yeah. of ignore. Yeah. Uh, take me through the scene between Livia and Isabel in the morning where she tells Livia that her and um, Pietro are made for each other and the girls reach an understanding. Like, how was Livia feeling? Was she very nervous for that conversation? Yeah, I think she was very, very nervous because like the, the night before, uh, it was a chaotic situation. Uh, there was a, this chaotic situation with Isabel, that crying scene, it was, really hard to watch also for me as Flavia not as Livia but I think Livia um, as she said uh, she uh, didn't want to uh, hurt Livia or hurt Isabel um, so of course she's nervous because she's she thinks that uh, Isabel is mad uh, <laughs> um, but uh, at the end uh, Isabel understands that uh, Livia um, didn't mean to uh, hurt her, so she tells um, that she can um, kiss Pietro. And uh, it was hard for Isabel, I think, but it was hard also for Livia because um, Isabel, it's very important for Livia. So um, find uh, again a friend that, a friend that like the whole situation between uh, Isabel and Pietro kind of um, destroyed all the uh, good friendship that Livia and Isabel had. So it's beautiful that, again, they, um, Livia and Isabel, bond. So um, uh, it was an important, an important scene for all the triangle with uh, Livia, Pietro and Isabel. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> And can we talk about how like of a kind, compassionate character that that Isabel is for forgiving Livia? I mean, she's so I think mature for for what she yeah. did. <laughs> like these are teenagers, but the fact that she willingly like could give yeah, it's almost Pietro back to realistic for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's unrealistic because she's like twelve or thirteen, I think. So yeah, she's very mature. Uh, but yeah, she understands that um, Livia and Pietro are made for each other. Um, she wants to uh, see Livia and Pietro together and she doesn't want to get hurt anymore.
and I think she's right. <laughs> Yeah, like for her to she it's interesting because for um like Pietro he he couldn't end it, which is the thing. So Isabel did it for for both of them. And so I think that says a lot about her character. But um I also think that Livia and Pietro have really good chemistry, especially when um they make eye contact and they're honest with each other. Like that scene you mentioned where um Pietro opens up. and Livia is kind of there to comfort him. Do you and Andrea talk about your scenes, any of your scenes before you film or in between takes and rehearsals? Um, let's just say that Andrea is not much of a talker, so um, we don't talk too much about the scenes, but just because uh, I think we uh, know each other really, really well, like almost, no, more than two from like since first season was 2021. So yeah, almost three years and we know each other very, very well. So like the, the chemistry that, I'm, that I'm happy to, to, to hear that it's uh, on the screen, I think it's because we just know each other really well. So it's, oh, it's uh, also, I think um, a good, a uh, good way to uh, not talk about the scenes so you can all put uh, when the scene starts, when they say action and uh, it's all spontaneous. So yeah, I, 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 I am uh, happy that you could see in that uh, chemistry. I like that method because I think it works both ways where sometimes you don't want to talk too much and like over prepare. So when we see it, it happens naturally. Like you're kind of almost doing the take for like the first one or two times. Um, were you surprised when you read the scripts and you saw that Livia and Pietro would reunite at the end of the season? Or did you guess that this would happen? Oh no! It <laughs> uh, it was not a it, it was not a surprise for me because I I don't know I just knew it uh, in the end they would they would um come turn together back yeah come together um so yeah I was not surprised because I think that the final scene of the first season you can tell that Livia it's just hurt but she's still in love with him. She's still in love with him, so uh, she's just too proud to to tell Pietro that. But um, they never leave each other. I think it's funny that you mentioned like she's t she was too proud because I feel like her and Pietro are really similar in that sense and that yeah. they're both kind of proud and in English the the word is like stubborn like sometimes you stubborn. don't want to admit that that you're wrong uh, what was your personal like Flavia's reaction to them coming back together Yeah, uh, I was not surprised, <laughs> but of course I was happy because um, um, I think they they are a good couple, and um, I really like like all the storyline in the in the first season, like kind of enemies to lovers. <laughs> I I would say that because she is Miss Perfect and she is like the, the bad guy, of course. um the popular guy uh it's an um, unpopular storyline but it's always enjoyable so yeah at the end I was happy to see them together and to see them happy of course but I still think that Isabel uh doesn't uh deserve that no I hope it's wrong in yeah English. yeah that's right to say she doesn't yeah that's perfect to say that she doesn't Okay. deserve it because for a character that's only been like so kind and kind Yeah. of on it honest with her feelings like it's just hard to see her have that outcome where she's upset at the end of the Yeah, season. she she was just in love with Pietro because um also I think Pietro was feeling something for Isabel. So uh, yeah, that crying scene uh, of Isabel was hard to watch for those reasons because um Isabel did nothing wrong at the end. Uh, she was just in love with him and she couldn't do nothing, anything.
like you mentioned, you you like Livia and Pietra together. You like seeing them happy. Uh, there are some fans out there who think that their relationship is toxic, like harmful, um, ha could have a bad ending. What is your response to that? Having been in Livia's shoes, like, do you think it's unhealthy for them to be together? Oh, my God. Uh, I didn't see it like never that way <laughs> like toxic uh, no I, I don't think it's to do you think it's toxic toxic <laughs> I mean I okay so I will say that like them together it it could have a bad outcome but I think that they've both done a lot of growing throughout the the two seasons especially with Livia in season two so I think it could have a happy ending I think it just has to do with they when they're both like proud and stubborn it could like not be the best combination yeah but toxic I think it's a little bit too much <laughs> <laughs> I do think toxic can be a strong word I mean these are kind of young teenagers they're still kind of growing yeah. and learning <laughs> yeah I think just the, the only thing that Pietro and Livia um, have done wrong is hurting Isabel. Just that, I think. So I'm a little bit surprised, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I don't think they are toxic. They they just um, misunderstood on the all, all the situation because in the first part of the second season uh, it's Pietro that is uh, um, like is really in love with Livia and wants to get back together and in the other parts Olivia is not stubborn anymore and wants to um, go back with Pietro um, so it's like all are misunderstood and uh at the end, Isabel is the one that is getting hurt. But yeah, just that. It's a misunderstood. I don't think there is like some toxic um, moments. There is, um, I guess, in season one, it kind of dates back to that kind of initial um, prank in, in which like Livia is upset. So there was, I guess, that moment too. And so you only hope that these characters have kind of grown from their maybe past mistakes and things that they yeah. looked over. Um, I'm curious about the Pantarosa scenes because all of that looked like a lot of fun. So where was that a location? How was it to film at? What are some of your favorite memories from, from the Pantarosa parts? Yeah, Pantarosa was uh, always in Ischia, was shooting always in Ischia. Um, like all the last episode, was shoot shoot um, was shot in one week in Ischia, all um all the last uh, episode. Uh, so yeah, Ischia is always magical, as I always said. Um, so yeah, all the views, uh, the atmospheres. Uh, we had a lot of fun together because they, because the last episodes is like all the scene we are together. Um. There are some scenes uh, like me and Pietro or uh, Monica and Giulio, but um, almost all the, the scenes we are together. So, of course, we have made a lot of good memories, like the, um, the, the scene where we play on the beach. Um, it's, um, it was really fun. It was really hot that day. So <laughs> for my low pressure and also for the Sophia's one was hard, but, uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, and so yeah, Pantaraza was really fun to shoot. Um, but it's Ischia, I think <laughs> it's Ischia that puts some magic in all those locations. And there also was the boat ride um, that you <laughs> that looked yeah, like kind of cool. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, because the water is like crystal clear and it was really fun uh, with the drone. We shoot with the drone and with the camera. Um, so yeah, also the, the boat scene. High tech, there's a drone involved now. Yeah. Now, I love that in part two, Livia, she grew closer to Bianca. Um, what can you say about this new friendship for Livia and how it differed 
from her friendships with Isabel, with Katya, Sarah, and the other girls in 3D? Um, yeah, I think um, uh, Bianca for Livia, it's um, like a, a good example because um, for Livia, um, she, Livia sees in Bianca like the person she was in the first season, I think, some ways because she's really optimistic and she's a good advisor. Yeah, it's oh, okay. She gives um, really good advice like Livia and um, so they really understand this, each other and Le uh, Bianca uh, helps Livia for the all the Ariana situation, but also Livia helps Bianca with all the triangle with uh, Mirko and Daniele. So yeah, it's a beautiful friendship. And I saw also uh, from the fan, they, they ship uh, Bianca and Livia. It's a little bit strange, but I think it's just because they are really uh, good friends and um, they had they have chemistry on the screen on the screen, I think. So they <laughs> ship Bianca and Livia together. Um and it was um fun to shoot with uh Fiamma. Um it, it was fun because we had the same haircut. You both uh, had the but, bangs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um they say to, to us that um we look kind of look like uh also the fan. They told us that we kind of look uh, look like uh, each other so um yeah they are a uh, good friends <laughs> i did really like you know seeing them together and it's funny because initially livia doesn't like bianca because she sees bianca kiss pietro but they kind of they moved past that when she realized yeah. that there's nothing there and i did see like comments about the ships and they were calling them the hair twins and and things like hair that twins, too. yeah because their hair it's they look like just the color it's different but the haircut it's almost identical so yeah in the first part of the second season uh there is that kiss but um that meant nothing uh, for Bianca and Livia understands that so uh, they passed that moment. <laughs> I feel like Bianca was introduced and she almost seemed like this like fairy godmother like she was she <laughs> also stepped back from from Mirko for for Daniele and at the end when she looks at the camera after um, Pietro's talking to the camera I thought that was like an interesting moment at the end how would you say Livia has changed and grown at the end of season two with what she's been through I think Livia now is a totally different person from the Livia we saw in the first season the first episodes um I think she is grown she is more free like full of freedom uh, she's also I think a little bit proud of the person she uh, is now because she has been through a lot this second season and she have made it some way so she is now um free from the fake friends the uh Katya and Sara and she has the her class back so now she has true friends by her side uh, I think she's ready for high school because she is grown up and she is more happy I hope and but overall she is more free I, I, I would like to say that because it's a very important topic for Livia, being free uh, by, by the judgment of others and all other things, but she is free now, it is, it is very important for the character. I like that that word free and you mentioned like judgment expectations that like her parents and other people have for her and I think that at the end of the season that's a really good mix between she's she's finding herself again and what makes her happy like you talked about in the first season her being Miss Perfect so it's really finding that balance between uh, she did let her grades slip but finding herself again academically with her grades but also being unpredictable and bold yeah. but for for her friends and not just you know for for bad motives i 
I love how you described <laughs> the, the Libya situation. Yeah, it's um, that balance that she finds, um, it's fundamental for her. So yeah, I love how you describe it. <laughs> What storyline or kind of plot um, surprised you the most in season two, but not one that Livia was a part ah, of? Okay. Um, I would say um, Monica and Giulio. Uh, yeah, Monica and Giulio, but also Pietro and Isabel. I, I think they were unexpected. Um, I really liked them at the end, uh, both of them. I have to say that also Pietro and Isabel. Um, I really liked also Giulio and Ariana. So um, I was a little bit uh, uh, sad for um, those uh, that storyline, but um, I really like Monica and Giulio too. So um, yeah, I would say those two couple, those two couples were unexpected. Uh, what do you think about it? I don't know because I I um, like everything. So... Yeah, I like everything that kind of showed up in the season. Um, I was sad a bit for Ariana and Julio, but I liked how they remained friends. Like it kind yeah. of it happened, but there was no big like drama surrounding it. It was just kind of like okay, this won't work out long term. But Monica and Julio was a big surprise. For me because I talked to Federica about it and about Manuel and I was like okay they're gonna bring Manuel into the show and he was in the show but then it kind of um her and Julio but I, I think that they looked really cute together yeah yeah also them are like animus and anim animus to lovers yeah Going into a hopefully a third season, what would you like to see or explore with Livia, both personally and with 3D as a whole? I know you mentioned high school. So do you have any ideas yeah. on that? Um, as we said before, I just hope that Livia could maintain that balance uh, so she can live more um relaxed and more proud of herself um so i hope that she um could be happy with herself she um is now ready to face new challenging challenges to face new problem also <laughs> new adventure uh, adventures i hope and uh i hope also she uh, will make new friends um uh, Pietro and Livia, I I hope they remain together after all. Because if we if they don't, I like there is something wrong. <laughs> so um, but she is also she must be happy for the person she is now. And so yeah, I just hope she will be happy. I'm not sure if uh, any of the cast knows yet if you've been renewed, but I'm hoping you get renewed. I just love um, speaking to you all and you're all so talented. And I think that we'd love to see more of what happens with these characters as they continue to, to grow older, go into high school. Uh, are there any other upcoming projects that you can share? Out of Diari? Uh, yes, outside of okay. Diari. Uh, yes. Uh, there is, but um, I don't know if I can. Say it's a that secret. Much. Maybe uh, you do have a short film that maybe you can say a bit about because I think it premiered at Torino Film oh, yeah. Festival in the um, November. It's already it's already out. It's, um, it's a it's a, it's a short film. Um, and um, it's um. I don't know, it went on uh, a festival, yeah, an Italian festival, the Torino one, and it's, um, I didn't see it because uh, uh, the the day they were uh, seeing it, I was not at home and at, in, in Rome, so I um, have to see it, but I don't know when, uh, so... Yeah, I really enjoyed shoot the uh, short film because uh, also the um, director um, uh, was like a um, personal story. So 
um, it was uh, really beautiful to to impersonate uh, that character, and it was beautiful. But the upcoming projects, projects, uh, uh, yes, they they are, but. I I don't know if I can say it's okay. Uh, We don't want to get you in trouble because I don't think it might not be public information. I don't think I saw anything new on yeah, like I your, just your don't IMDb. know if I can say something, but uh, there is there is. <laughs> it's exciting to know that you are working on on new projects, and so hopefully you'll keep everyone updated on like Instagram um, when you can release the news but the short yeah. film will will give a name drop it's uh, Niente Niente that means okay. nothing oh and you say it's a personal story from from the director uh yeah like both of them it's based um uh on something from our personal life but uh not all of it okay so like it's kind of like a, a drama they call it like dramatized version of an event in in real life so hopefully we yeah. get to see it at some point like you mentioned you haven't seen it yet in full but um, hopefully it continues to make its rounds in like film yeah. festivals and you'll get to go to another premiere um, we have one final question for you it's a fun question who would you rather face in a fight? One horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Oh my god. <laughs> I love the question. Uh can you repeat one uh horse-sized horse duck? duck. So a duck the size of a horse yeah. or 100 horses the size of ducks. Oh, I think I would choose like the one horse size duck just because it's one. Because I think a hundred are a lot. <laughs> just, I I um I have a gun. Like I I can have a gun. I don't know, <laughs> or just with my hands. <laughs> let like... Let's go with your hands. <laughs> if you don't just have. My hands. Yes, if you don't have anything, but it depends on, there are a lot of things to think about, I guess, like if you were in an environment where you could make something a weapon, again, this is just for fun, and we're not actually hurting any <laughs> animals here, but you are fighting for your life, so <laughs> you need to think smart. No, yeah, I would uh, go with the one horse sides duck, also because um, uh like the duck has no arms like the wings are <laughs> not arms because it's it's an advantage for me both you know so yeah i would say that one hurt size duck <laughs> i like that answer thank you so much for for taking the time to chat and catch up it's always such a pleasure oh also for me thank you so much of course. So hopefully we can chat again soon. But until then, for all those watching, make sure to catch Flavia in Diari Season 2, Part 2, which is Episodes 8 to 14, are now all on Netflix. So make sure you watch the whole season. And yeah, hopefully Season 3, uh, fingers crossed. But stay tuned uh, for more projects from Flavia. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.